It's time for the absolutely... I'm on my way! Completely! I'm almost there! Random! Why are there so many stairs? Podcasts! Oh, jeez! With Andrew Rose. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another exciting, fun-filled episode of the Absolutely Completely Random Podcast for Saturday, August 21st, 2021. That's right, folks. It's Saturday again, which means, once again, I am back to make, well, everyone's lives a living hell. (laughs) I'm like Mr. Freeze at the end of that Batman movie with George Clooney. I'm here to make your life a living hell. Or, in my case, I'm actually here to entertain you in my own special, subtle way. So what am I talking about this week as you hear the clicking of my mouse in the background? As you hear the fan slowly chugging away in the distance? Well, I'm going to be talking about Nintendo ordering that ROM site to destroy all of its games, or else. You don't want to know what the or else is, trust me. Hey, Showtime, an anime about children's idol and forbidden love is coming this fall. Oh yeah, I can't see this not having a controversy with it. Well, if you like Pokemon Unite and you love Snorlax, you're gonna hate the upcoming patch because it's nerfing Snorlax. God, no! Why? The Rent-A-Girlfriend manga is kicking off a life-size figure character poll, which honestly sounds interesting. I'm I'm not lying about that. And this is funny. (coughs) So, I I had to laugh when I saw this earlier. But uh, Valve has patched an exploit that has been letting you add infinite Steam wallet money to your account. So you can't do that anymore. You can't have, you can't go uh, Scrooge McDuck anymore with your Steam wallet. Nope. Nope, nope, nope. You are uh, basically screwed. But yes, all this and more this week on the Absolutely Completely Random Podcast. Before we get into all that, folks, I know you know the song and dance by now. I'm sure you know the song and dance by now, but sing along with me if you know the words. A-R-H-O-A-D-S hyphen 2012 on eBay. I have a wide variety of things for sale. From strange oddities, to trading cards, to DVDs, to action figure parts, you name it, I probably have it. One person's trash is always another person's treasure, especially on the worldwide garage sale that is eBay. I mean, come on. I mean, come on. Where else could you find a Kleenex that was probably used by Dr. Dre and one of William Shatner's old toupees? I mean, that Weird Al song can't be entirely wrong, right? So while you're surfing the information superhighway and you're looking for the worldwide flea market of a garage sale, come on by eBay. We're better than Amazon as it is anyway. And so come on to eBay. Come check me out. That's A-R-H-O-A-D-S hyphen 2012 on eBay. And while you're out there surfing the information superhighway, take the off-ramp onto Twitter and come over and shoot the shit with me at Otaku Roads. That's the at symbol, capital O. T-A-K-U, capital R-H-O-A-D-S, over on Twitter. And don't forget to like the official Web Designer 18 Facebook page, too, because, hey, where else are you going to find me online, right? And then there's also here on YouTube, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell so you can be made aware when new videos drop right here on the Web Designer 18 YouTube channel. All right, so this is the part where I usually go, how'd my week go? And honestly, my week went pretty good from last Saturday. So, uh, as you know, Wednesday was my birthday, which was kind of nice. Uh, Monday wasn't too bad of a day. I uh, got my sandwich for lunch. Uh, did some of my usual Monday stuff. Tuesday was okay. Was kind of hoping deep in the back of my mind that I would have had Wednesday off. I was like, come on, universe, throw me a mulligan. Give me something. Nope. Nope, I had to go to work Wednesday. I was like, damn it. I'm like, all right, what the hell? So I go to work, and I was kind of having this, okay, this is a weird day. Now, remember last week I made a comment that I thought I was going to get yelled at? I didn't happily, uh, which is very good. I was, I, I'm was. i not going to lie. I was actually a little terrified about it. I'm kind of happy it didn't happen. So I'm actually happy for once I was wrong. I will not deny that. I was happy for once that I was wrong. But uh, so... Wednesday was uneventful-ish at work. Uh, I got to leave 12 minutes early. Because, like, okay, we got everything done. I'm like, all right. So I got to leave 12 minutes early, and I'm like, that's fine. 
and I'm thinking to myself, this is like the weirdest day so far that I have had. I come home, and for the last couple weeks, I have been trying my damnedest to get three stars on, well, I should say three crowns, actually, but basically to get a perfect on this one level of the Lord's Mobile game in the Elite section to just basically piss whip my way through it so I can start getting the medals for the one character. And I finally got it on Wednesday. At this point, I'm like, okay, now I'm officially convinced this is now a weird-ass day. It wasn't so much beforehand, now it's officially a weird day. Because now I'm thinking, okay, I just got the three medals. I, I got the three crowns, which means that I have gotten the perfect, and I can just piss whip my way through it. And I'm thinking to myself, this happens on my birthday. Okay, something bad's gonna happen. Something bad's gonna happen before the end of the day. Well, of course, they're calling for storms, and I'm like, okay, that's nothing new. Uh, I had to give my uncle a hand quick with something, but it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. I hung out with my buddy Sean for a little bit because he stopped by because I had a present for him for his birthday back in July. But because he went out of state uh, to celebrate his birthday, lucky bastard. Uh, <laughs> yeah, look, well, he's got a better income than I do, so he can he can afford to take fun trips like that. I can't. <laughs> I can't. I can't. I can I afford to basically stay living here. But um so basically uh I hung out with him for like I want to say like maybe 15 20 minutes. He stopped by quick after work. I took him out his present. I said, "Yeah, here you go." And he's looking at goes, "I got him three uh movies from the Dollar Tree." Uh I mean, that's where I do most of my gift shopping. It's cheap, it's convenient. I can find the same good quality crap as anywhere else. Uh, but I got him, uh, three movies for his birthday, and, uh, two, this is really cool, so, there was, like, two, uh, there was a glass there, and I'm like, oh, I'm gonna get two of these for him, because knowing him, he'll break one of them, and because I'm sort of that, you know, symmetrical type of bastard that I am, it was official beer taster, because now my buddy Sean likes to drink, I I'm not gonna lie, and he's not an alcoholic, but he's got a collection, because... When we were cleaning out the uh, cupboards after Grandma died, we found a whole bunch of old, like, booze. Now, this stuff isn't drinkable anymore. It's not rare or anything. It's basically, you could have bought this off the shelf. And at the time, my grandfather goes, oh, give it to your buddy. He'll probably take it. So I did. Yeah, he's made a little collage in his basement of it. <laughs> he sent me a picture of it. He sent a, a big-ass collage of it in the basement. Well, there was one that we had found, but we had moved it. Uh, by accident, we forgot where we had stuck it, and when my mom and I were cleaning something uh, the one day, we found it. It's this little bottle of Jack Daniels, and we're like, oh yeah, we're just gonna, it's like, oh yeah, I'll give this to him for his birthday. So I, <laughs> I wrap it up in bubble wrap, and he's like, oh yeah, you spare no expense. He goes, god damn it, this scotch tape's bringing a day game. <laughs> it was kind of funny because he's like, God damn it, this scotch tape's bringing a day game! Because I I put a piece of... It was just regular tape, too. I put a piece of tape around it to keep it closed. And he's trying his damnedest to open it. He's like, God damn it, this doesn't really bring a day game today. And I'm like, yep. As, like, I get... Um, he had, like, two bags of chips that I gave him. Uh, two glasses that were the official beer taster. The little, this tiny little bottle of Jack Daniels that... We well technically we wanted to give that to him. I think it was like last year, and we forgot. And well, we had moved it by accident, and we forgot we moved it. And then his own movie. So yeah, that was his gift. And it's like yeah, this is a this was a lot of fun. I got to hang out. I got to catch up with him, shoot the shit a little bit. So that was nice. And then that led into my favorite uh, dinner then for my birthday. It's a nice little casserole, and it was nice. In fact, we still have some in the fridge. It's gonna be my lunch uh, for Sunday, because last night. Because then Thursday was, you know, okay. Friday was, you know, all right, leading up to dinner. Now, uh, I went out, got, I have to go out to eat because my uncle gave me a little bit of money. He's like, here, go out, get yourself something nice to eat for your birthday. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Well, it was going to give ugly-ass weather on Wednesday. So it's like, well, I can go out for my actual birthday because I had to work on Friday. I didn't want to get anything, you know, that, you know, like really heavy. So it's like, okay, yeah, no, we'll go Friday. That'd be a nice way to start off the weekend. So we went to get some good chicken. Uh, now, for those of you that don't know, I love Bojangles chicken, and I went into the Bojangles near me, and I got some chicken. Oh, boy, do I love that chicken. And it's, I will agree the chicken's gotten smaller, but damn, if it wasn't good, it was good, it was still good chicken. In fact, that's going to be lunch uh, today, 
uh, Saturday. <laughs> Basically, that's going to be my lunch is leftovers. Uh, but yeah, so it's really good. Uh, I love the chicken. I love their biscuits, though. Those are the best. Is their biscuits. The fries aren't bad, but they kind of skipped on the seasoning, but the chicken made up for that. <laughs> the chicken made up for that. But yep, so that was my uh, birthday week. So I'm now 32 years old. Woohoo! I had a lot of uh, birthday wishes from uh, friends. And some family members on Facebook, so that was nice. And yeah, I'm now 32 years old. Woohoo! I'm more of an adult than I was last year. Uh, but anyway, though, uh, let me know how your weeks went. How did your week go? Let me know in the comment section. And without any further ado, let's get into the podcast, because this is going to be a lot of fun this week. I can guarantee it. All right, so this is a topic that literally missed getting on last week's uh, podcast, and it missed it by an hour and a half because that's when I got the uh, email newsletter from Kotaku, and it had it in there. So anybody out there remember that ROM Universe site? I talked about it already. That's the one where the guy decided to defend himself against Nintendo, and he lost. <laughs> Let's let's all remember that for a second. You want to defend yourself in a court of law. You have the right to an attorney. <laughs> you decide to defend yourself, uh, and you go up against Nintendo. That's like me going up against Disney and hoping that my own knowledge is going to trump their high-powered yes lawyers. Uh, that don't work like that in any way, shape, or form. But, uh... Apparently, ROM Universe has been ordered to by August 17th, so that's why I said this came out last week, so I don't know if there's an update or not yet. I'll have to double check, but um, they were ordered to destroy all of their games or else. And for those of you that don't remember, uh, so basically what happened was they got busted by Nintendo for having ROM copies of Nintendo games on the site. Nintendo sued the pants off the guy that ran the site. The guy was ordered to pay Nintendo $50 a month, and he couldn't even do that. Because it's like, oh, well, you don't even, you know, bother to pay us this. So Nintendo, you know, yeah, they were supposed to be paid uh, $50 monthly by Matthew Storman, uh, the owner of ROM Universe. And he didn't do it. I mean, that's what the theory was on paper, but Nintendo received no money. They got nothing. They got jack diddly shit, and they were diddly freaking pissed. Yeah, I'm like Ned Flanders, I swear. That's <laughs> how Ned Flanders would swear. So a new court document, so a judge has ordered the owner of the site to destroy all of his Nintendo ROMs or face legal consequences. Now, for those of you wondering, okay, what's Nintendo? How many other games could he possibly have? Probably a lot, but this is opening up a floodgate. So they were sued back in 2019. Um, it was a massive, uh, mass-scale copyright infringement. Nintendo won the lawsuit in May and was awarded $2.1 million in damages, which were supposed to be paid in $50 monthly increments, which you figure would take an eternity and a half to pay the fuck back. $2.1 million and $50 a month. Uh, you know, hold on, I, I, I'm kind of curious how long that would have actually took. And I know I could probably just use my brain for this, but uh, my brain and I are not on speaky terms right now in regards to figuring out math. So, two million, let's see, 2.1, so two, one, zero, 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 zero. There we go. Divided by $50. <laughs> so that would be 42,000 months 12 months in a year <laughs> so, so like what 35 years he <laughs> would never paid him back basically I think Nintendo was like, look, we're just going to do this, stop you from doing this shit, and eventually, I mean, Nintendo probably would have eventually said, okay, look, you've learned your lesson, you've paid us back enough, and they would have just said, no, we're good, we're good, we're done, the, he, he's broken, we're finished. But of course, uh, Storman didn't bother to pay the $50, even he agreed upon paying, decided, oh, no, fuck it, I'm not paying you. So the game publisher requested a permanent injunction against Storman as it feared he might be willing to bring the site back online. And now there's more. 
because apparently this site was his only source of income, claiming that Nintendo wants their $50 a month. Well, they're going to have to take it. You know, he doesn't have a job. The site was his only source of income, which Nintendo's now taking. I don't see why I have to pay them $50 a month. You, you remember me talking about this. I did a previous topic on this. So apparently, uh, Torrent Freak uh, spotted this. The judge has now granted Nintendo's injunction after taking another look at the case and the ongoing actions of Stormin. The court has now ordered the uh, owner of the site to permanently destroy all unauthorized Nintendo games or other unauthorized copies of Nintendo's intellectual properties, including movies, books, and music. What books does Nintendo have? What, what movies does Nintendo have? <laughs> That's a better question. Uh, the judge is given Stormin until August 17th to comply and until August 20th to file a declaration with the court verifying he has followed the judge's orders. If he fails to do so, he could face perjury charges. <laughs> yeah, let's see him actually get away with this. And this is the best part, though, is that as also a result of this new injunction filed uh, late last week, uh, Stormin can no longer distribute, copy, sell, or even play unauthorized Nintendo ROMs. He is also barred from using any Nintendo trademarks or logos. Truly, the website cannot catch a break from Nintendo. Well, yeah, it can't catch a break from Nintendo, but the problem is that the guy brought this on himself. And that's the sad truth of it, because you took on Nintendo without a lawyer. You tried to defend against Nintendo yourself. That, that's like Dale Gribble. There was an episode of King of the Hill when Dale Gribble tried going up against Big Tobacco and he tried defending himself and it's like, oh no, this case has been moved to Superior Court across the street. And he's like, where they'll give me my check? Where they're going to sue the pants off of you. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> yeah. And th that's what this poor jackass just tried doing. He tried pulling a Dale Gribble. And uh, it didn't work. Oh, I'll pay you $50 a month and then not pay them. This is then fucking Tendo. They sued Mari Kart into oblivion. You think for a minute that you're going to be escaping this shithole? Hell no. And I think the whole reason why is because he just, for starters, they can go after all ROM sites, to be honest with you. Any ROM site that has any Nintendo games at all, you would be screwed on. But here's the thing. I, I think this one probably was the first one on their list because they probably saw it as we're going to set an example and really nail these people to the wall. In this case, Nintendo won. And Nintendo whooped this sorry SOB's ass, and he just refused to go down, you know, without a fight. And, and that's... He, he just went down. He, oh, great, okay, well, I'm gonna try and fight you. Yeah, you're basically like a child trying to kick a grown man's ass. That ain't... That ain't happening. Here's your... Yeah, this is, like, the best summary for this entire case. You were like a child trying to kick a grown man's ass. Um, yeah, it didn't work. Uh, Nintendo basically sued the pants off of you. You didn't even want to pay them the $50 a month. I would have just found, like, a, a really shitty job, worked X amount of hours, ate ramen or something, and paid them their $50 a month. It's like having a fucking student loan. Or just declare bankruptcy. He's like, oh, I can't pay them. Problem. You know, this is why I can't pay them. I have no money. Boom. You know, there's ways around there's ways around this other than just avoiding their ass entirely. But no, of course, you're just going to avoid them, thinking it'll go away. And oh, surprise, it didn't go away. And Nintendo's just like, nope, we're going to go back to the courts. The judge ruled that you must now destroy all of your games that are ours. You can kiss off. And boom, there you go. And that's all she wrote, folks. Now you got nothing. <laughs> uh, there's probably going to be more to this uh, look forward to some future installments I think this is the new Mari Kart at this point and we all remember that, that was fun oh yeah, Mari Kart, that's the game where, that was the thing where they tried to make a Mario Kart that runs the streets and caused a bunch of legal issues, yep, that's the one and I felt so sorry for him and then I read what, then they finally revealed this is what our thing was and I'm like I felt sorry for you, and now I don't feel as sorry for you. <laughs> it was like, yeah, I felt sorry for you, and now I don't feel as sorry for you anymore. I, I, I don't, uh, I don't feel sorry for you anymore. I did. I felt sorry for you, not anymore, but I did. <laughs> oh, but yeah, I doubt this is going to be the last 
Uh, I, I highly doubt it's going to be the last thing we are going to be seeing in regards to this ROM universe. Uh, I really don't see this ending. I, I, I get the feeling that he probably didn't comply by it, and we're going to find out about it. It'll probably be next week. It'll probably be a topic next week. I bet you. Watch. I, watch. It probably will be. You know, it starts to get to the point where I don't think I can swing a cat anymore without hitting some type of a controversy around an anime, and I get the feeling that this is definitely going to be one of those. So, yeah, apparently there's a new anime coming out called, and I'm literally going to tell you the translated title because I'm not even going to try to pronounce um, the actual title. It's translated provocatively as, I want to have sex with Minami. Even if she's a songstress, all right? It's, that, that's what it's called. It's called Showtime. And uh, it's slightly different translated, though, as it's, that was what the manga had. So the anime title is going to have a slightly less provocative title called Showtime. I want to do it even if she's a songstress. Now, to be fair, there have been some weird anime titles out there. I remember one years ago, uh, even the plot made me cringe, but there are some weird-ass titles out there. Uh, there's an entire, ironically, one of the few Watch Mojo videos I actually like anymore, because uh, Todd Habercorn did the uh, voiceover for it, which is really funny, because he <laughs> it's really funny, uh, but it's basically weird anime title names. And there was a few of them on there that even I'm like, oh, yeah. So, this is definitely one of them. But you figure, uh, anime that's controversy-free? Oh, hell no. I think this one's going to have a lot of controversy in it. So, this is courtesy of Shueisha, as they have announced that its manga, Showtime, is getting an anime adaptation. The original manga uh, was created by my Kiri Kiri, and it's... Uh, comic festa anime series adaptation will be available both online and on japanese tv in early october uh the story follows widower uh okay is that shoji uh fujimoto who is raising his daughter alone and who aims at becoming a picture book writer he meets idol minami takasaki uh, who works on the kids program oh god you gotta be kidding me uh it's a kids program let's sing along with our songstress oh god oh god <laughs> well this is basically what every I, I swear to god it's like what every uh kid thinks of when they see when they watch their own little kids programs probably uh, <laughs> this is not gonna be good here uh the relationship between the two of them is forbidden because takasaki has to keep a clean image as a children's idol Oh, yeah! That's like the uh, whole Disney Park thing. If you go there, you see the uh, people walking around in costume. Yeah, if they break character, they're fired. Uh, you cannot shatter the image that these characters have towards children. Oh, uh, yeah, I believe that. Oh, God, this is this cannot be good. <laughs> like I said, this thing's going to be have some controversy to it. I care. I can see that! Uh, so part of the cast has been revealed... Uh, Rika Kitami plays uh, Miname Takasaki. Uh, Hasehinsen, I probably mispronounced that, is playing uh, Shujo Fujimoto. Ari, Ak Ari Akasuki is playing his daughter, uh, Kana Fujimoto. And Kanede uh, Shira Shirakami uh, is playing Kazuro O Nissan. Or Alice, oh sorry, and Alice uh, Sakurai plays Pautan. I have no idea what the hell that means. Uh, directing and scripting are being done by uh, Saburo uh, Mura, uh, who previously worked on My Matchmaking Partner is a Student, an Aggressive Troublemaker, Laz, uh, sorry, and Laz, meanwhile, is the Chief Director for Animation, and the task of character designing goes to... Kenichi Hamazaki. Art design is being taken care of by Mame and Kanade uh, Sakaguchi. Yeah, all right. And Mame, additionally, working as a director and composing director of photography is Mito Kanada, 
who has also worked on Vampire Nights. Oh, all right, I kind of I kind of remember that one. Uh, the anime is being produced by. <laughs> I can't read out. I can't read this up. Uh, Picante Circus and Studio Matsu uh, is also involved with. Oh God, this is weird. Is that sorry? Is also involved uh, with. Uh, I can't even pronounce it. Hi Sai Yoshi. Uh, Hi Sai Yoshi. Hirosawa is the uh, sound director. The original manga has not been licensed in America. Of course it hasn't. <laughs> of course it hasn't. I we get an X-ray. Can you imagine that on a Barnes and Noble shelf? Here's an a here's a manga series about a children's about a picture book, a uh, possible future picture book writer, and wants to get it on with a song stress from a kids show. Ah, uh, yeah. I don't see that ending well. <laughs> yeah, it has not been licensed in America. Over in Japan, the manga will get its first print edition in September. So it hasn't even come out yet, and it's already getting its own anime adaptation. It's getting its first print run. When the hell did this thing premiere? And, oh my god, that's even weirder. Uh, okay, but I, I, this is funny. So there's a couple comments on this. I always like checking the comments sometimes. This is one. Uh, not that I really care, but damn, these authors are trying to sell anything with a title like that. I guess whatever puts food on the table. Well, yeah, that's true. But it's important that then there's a reply. It's important to remember that, Jap that Japanese doesn't have concept of profane language and only recognizes something as rude if it violates accepted ideas of status, like using informal language with an important person. That's true because if you think about it, if you actually watch like the subs, the official subs for some shows, they swear like words that you would not allow a child in this part of the world to say, they say over there in front of children left and right. I mean, they say damn shit, you name it. They say it over there and it's, it flows like water over here. Oh my God, no. Oh my god, no! The parents are pissed off. They're raising all sorts of hell. But yeah, I can definitely see this being... This is not going to be controversy-free. I can see this happening already. I'm trying to remember what the hell that... There was something about... Oh god, I, I gotta... Hold on, I gotta check this out. Oh, it, it, I remember the plot of it was... Uh, this girl basically wanted to lose her virginity. And that was the anime that it was getting. Uh, something first time. Ah, uh, you know, fuck, I'm not even gonna look it up. I, I remember it. That was the plot of it. God, it was... It was... I actually cringed. Oh, Yamada's first time. That's what it was. Yamada's first time. And that, the entire plot was that she was trying to pick the perfect person to basically uh, lose her virginity with. And that was an an... That was an anime series. Not a hentai. That was an anime series. And I'm like, yeah, no! I <laughs> that even turned me off! Uh, but okay, so this is definitely going to be bringing back a lot of uh, images towards people who probably are going to look at this and go, yeah, you know, when I was a kid and I would watch this weird, you know, kids puppet show, I could care less about the puppets. No, I, I kind of liked uh, the human, though. And it's like, you know, it's going to take you back to that. So this thing is not going to be controversy-free in any way, shape, or goddamn form. Oh, my God. No, this is not going to be controversy-free at all. This is going to have controversy out the ass. I guarantee it. Out the ass. This is going to have controversy. I do not see this being controversy-free. Uh, I love that, though. She has to keep a clean image as a children's idol. Well, yeah, uh, it's... Honestly, I could see that because you're going to be around children all the time. If all of a sudden they realize, oh my god. I mean, that's like the horrid thing. Because there was an article I remember reading years ago. Years ago. That some, uh, chi it was a child um, actor or something. Now, granted, at the time the article came out, she was like 20. But they were reminiscing her to when, I guess she played in like some really offbeat show in the 80s or something. Well, apparently she was pregnant. And her fans are freaking the hell out. She's in her fucking 20s, for God's sake. Let it go. She's, like, well, she's a child idol. She's a child idol. She's not an adult. Let it go. 
I mean, it's like that whole controversy with uh, Jamie Lynn Spears and uh, Miley Cyrus all over again with Disney and Nickelodeon. After uh, Jamie Lynn Spears had announced that she was pregnant, and people were like, oh, we're going to watch the last season of Zoe 101. Yeah, good luck with that. They filmed that before she made the announcement, so it doesn't, she's not going to show. And apparently they, Disney, there was a joke. There was a robot chicken sketch. But apparently uh, somebody made a comment that that was actually real. That they actually did have a conversation with her that said, look, you pull any of this crap, we'll not only yank your show off the air, we will ruin your career. And it was like, yeah, not a problem. Because at the time, it's like she was an idol to a lot of people. And it's like, yeah, no, can't deal with that. And I can get that. But like I said, this is not going to have a uncontroversial type of feel to it. I guarantee it. But I just, th this is hilarious. Th this is going to be funny. I, I can I can feel the awkwardness from here. And it's making me laugh my ass off that I can feel the awkwardness a mile and a half away. It's sad, but oh god, I cannot wait for this. I'm hoping I can try to watch this. This is going to be funny. Uh, it's going to be what? It's, it's going to be online, I thought they said. Uh, where the hell was it? Yeah, both online and on Japanese TV early in October. I might watch an episode or two. I, I want to I wanna see how bad this is going to be. Because I do not see this ending well. I swear to God, I don't see I don't see this ending well. I really freaking don't. This is gonna be one of those weird ass ones that's not gonna have um Oh yeah, this is this is gonna be one of those weird ones, folks. I can feel it I can feel it in my bones. It's gonna be one of those weird ones. Ah, Pokemon nerfing. Yes. As if that's never something new, right? Well, apparently it's... Oh, yeah, hell, it's not. If you've ever watched... Uh, oh, God. What's it? Oh, Full Swipe Gaming's YouTube channel. They do a lot of, you know, how good was this Pokemon? And they mostly talk about the competitive scene, which, of course... I, mean, I, I don't do the competitive scene. Okay, and a lot of people are like... Th there's a line in the sand. If you're either a competitive player or not, or not a competitive player... You, you apparently can't have an opinion if you don't play competitively. Uh, I, I don't see why. I can watch it. I can learn just because I don't have a fucking, you know, 3DS and a Switch and I'm playing online in online matches. You know, I did play online with Black and White. I got my ass kicked half a dozen times, but I played. Uh, yeah, okay, I don't play competitively. No. Why would I want to try to play competitively? I don't have the equipment to do it and everybody's going to be way better than you. I mean, you're literally going up against the world here. I mean, come on. I'm just happy playing by myself against the AI. Maybe an occasional friend or something, but yeah. But either way, uh, Pokemon Unite is now going to be part of this we're nerfing shit. Oh, great. And of course, the one that's got to get nerfed, it almost feels like it's Gen 1 all over again, or Gen 2 all over again. Say hello, everybody, to Snorlax. Snorlax is the big, fluffy, big-ass bear. The one that you could just love to just use as a pillow, which, by the way, they actually do have a Snorlax pillow. I I've actually seen it. And just, like, put your head on it and sleep the night away. Because, like, Snorlax just sleeps all the time. But it is one freaking brick house of a powerhouse. Well, sadly, Snorlax is going to get nerfed. He, he's going to get nerfed. Press F to pay respects to Snorlax getting nerfed, basically. Uh, so, yeah. So, Pokemon Unite's next highly anticipated update is going to be adding Blissey as a new healer. But that's not all. It's including a list of terribly disappointing fixes for any Snorlax mains out there. Plus a nudge to maybe stop using that damn eject button on 95% of your builds. Because the team want people to use more diverse uh, items a wider variety when you're using items so yeah per the vague patch notes this is always good Snorlax's heavy slam block and unite move uh, have all been nerfed when it comes to damage duration or healing while flail has been buffed overall these changes ensure that our big blue bud stops being such a terrible menace 
Yeah, okay. And let me tell you, according to the article, Snorlax can be built to be nearly unstoppable. Well, yeah, look at Gen 1 Pokemon. There were like three top-tier contenders in Gen 1. You had Tauros if it had Hyper Beam. Mewtwo, definitely, and Snorlax was in that top list. It's like, you go up against Snorlax, you're getting... It's like, Snorlax could stall your ass out. It's got a high defense. It's got, you know, a large amount of HP. It can learn rest, go back to sleep, wake up, and then, like, the next turn, whoop, start whooping your ass again. Uh, it, it was a powerhouse. It got nerfed with everything else. I mean, there's power creep in later generations. There's, you know, overarching, you know, changes, especially between Gen 1 and Gen 2 when they had the special split. That created a massive problem when it came to Pokemon having better power anymore because, well, now there's not a power, you know, now it's like it's two different specials. You have special attack and special defense versus just special, which covered both of them. So, no, you can't have that anymore. It's split now, which made a huge difference. A lot of attack and defense and speed shifted all over the place. HP shifted all over the place. It's just a nightmare in and of itself. And don't forget, Snorlax also got a freaking Mega Evolution. Or, no, it was the Gigantamax form. It didn't get, a mega, it didn't get the Mega Evolution. It got a Gigantamax form where it got the freaking, like, Tropical Oasis put onto its stomach. That's just what you wanted Snorlax to be, an island. Yeah. As a defender, he's obviously a bit bulkier, but he also has a strong crowd control with his shield uh, that hits fairly hard with his stun. Apparently, they liked equipping the cookie, uh, shield, and knee pads so that it has impressive HP, got exponentially higher with every goal. It didn't matter if they scored a measly point or 50, each dunk increased their health. Before long, though, Snorlax was such a wall that they could confidently take on an entire team of enemy players without much danger of actually dying. Between the shield and the stun, they could pretty much push people back and render them useless over and over again until their Unite move hit, which it, now at which point a massacre ensured, you know, ensued. But now all that's basically worthless because Snorlax is getting nerfed. So you can see why they want to rain Snorlax in. Now, come on, let Snorlax have some fun. I mean, come on, it's a big, bulky Pokemon. Let it have some fun. It wants to kick ass and take names. Let it kick ass and take names. It wants to whoop somebody's ass. Let it whoop somebody's ass. It has a prerogative, too. It has the right to whoop ass if it wants to. But yeah, I can see why they would want to rein it in. I mean, you put on certain items. It's almost like having a high-powered character in a... MMORPG or a two-player fighting thing. I think like Mortal Kombat or something like an online battle where like you can equip certain items and all of a sudden, you know, your damage that you're doing is supposed to be like super effective is doing next to shit. And now you're pissed. You're getting angry and you're going to rage quit. Yeah, I could see that. It could be like Korami in that episode of Star Trek where he rage quit against Data just because Data was whooping his ass. And he rage quit before rage quitting was even a thing. <laughs> But yeah, I can see why they would want to rein him in, though. Uh, yeah, it's going to get unstoppable. Point requ uh, requires a lot of careful play. Uh, I wasn't always assured, though. Once you get there, Snorlax is a beast. Or was. I'm sure he's still plenty capable, but yeah. You're never going to be uh, owning players like, Yeah, no, I got Snorlax. He's got Snorlax! Run! Yeah, no, that's never happening anymore now. The dream is dead. The dream is dead of basically beating people into the ground with Snorlax. That, that's dead. That's sad, too, that it's dead now. That, that's horrible. That's horrible that it's dead now. But apparently Garchomp, on the other hand, got buffed. Uh, a terrifying prospect given how deadly the land shark already is. Uh, same thing with Greninja. Well, of course, Greninja is going to get a buff because everybody loves Greninja. It's the most popular Pokemon in Japan, so yeah. Uh, somehow, still, though, nothing about Zeroa, which, yeah, makes kind of sense, and it's devastating discharge. Uh, kind of surprised there's nothing for Absol, uh, who also seems unstoppable in the right hands. In the right hands. In the right hands. Uh, perhaps the most notable change, aside from Storlax, is all the tweaks to various battle items. 
uh, in my experience, according to the article here, uh, nearly everyone equips the eject button, which lets you rapidly teleport a small distance away. At higher levels in ranked, uh, you do see some experimentation here and there, but more often than not, you, you know, can bet that a player will have the eject button equipped. It's useful, especially uh, when you're close to dying. Apparently, this person used it all the time. Well, it's about to get shittier. <laughs> <laughs> I can't tell you how exactly because all the notes say uh, stat decreases. And who knows what that means. Curiously though, uh, through Gold Getter, Fluffy Tail, and X Attack all got stat increases. Again, Lord knows what that means, but certainly sounds like a buff. So now you have extra incentive to try something else for your build. Assuming Snorlax isn't unplayable when the patch hits, which it probably will be. Uh, I'll likely swap the button for a goal getter. After all, my entire build is dependent on making as many dunks as possible. Maybe I'll just end up learning Crustle or Blissey instead. Choices in any case, uh, pat full patch notes are here below, so let me read these. So Crustle, uh, Stealth Rock, cooldowns reduced, uh, damage dealt to opposing Pokemon is increased, Rock Tomb... Oh, sorry, so Stealth Rock, the cooldown's reduced, and the damage is increased. Rock Tomb, the damage dealt is increased. Guard Chomp, movement speed changed. Bulldoze, damage dealt to opposing Pokemon increased. Dragon Rush, cooldown reduced. Slowbro, gets, let's see, for Surf, the duration of effect of opposing Pokemon decreased. Skull, bug fixes, damage dealt to opposing Pokemon increased. Snorlax, heavy slam, damage dealt to opposing Pokemon decreased. Block. Duration of effect on opposing Pokemon decreased. Fail. Or, sorry, flail. Move upgrade. Uh, Unite move. Power nap. HP restoration decreased. What the hell? Greninja. Smoke screen. Move downgrade. Cooldown lengthened. Water shuriken. Cooldown reduced. Damage dealt to opposing Pokemon increased. Double team. Cooldown reduced. Wigglytuff. Unite move. Starlight uh, recital. Bug fixes. Cinderace, base attack, bug fixes. I'm sorry, basic attack. Alolan Ninetales, Snow Warring, bug fixes. Aurora Veil, bug fixes. Gardevoir, basic attack, bug fixes. Psychic, bug fixes. Camarant, Hurricane, bug fixes. Wild Pokemon. Uh, Avalug, stat decrease. Battle items, eject button, stat decreases. Gold getter, stat increases. Fluffy Tail, stat increases. X attack, stat increases. Yeah, it sounds like they're buffing and nerfing shit. Well, that didn't last long, did it? No, of course not. Why Why would that last long in the aspect of, oh, hey, you know, we're going to let these Pokemon have this ungodly power. Yeah, we're not going to let you have that anymore. Uh, you abused the hell out of that power. Snorlax. Yeah, no, 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 no. Don't Snorlax. Don't, don't try to talk your way out of this, Snorlax. You screwed up. You had too much power. I've got to nerf you. Arceus, nerf him. Snore. Yep, there you go. And that's the end of that. It sucks, but it's true. It, it really does. And I, I feel sorry for the players because, I mean, this actually sounded like a really good Pokemon game for once. Uh, but, of course, they have to nerf it. They have to make adjustments. And I'm not going to argue you would need to do that for any game that's just starting out. But... The fact that you're literally taking a powerhouse and making it basically nothing more than a cuddly teddy bear. I mean, you're taking, like, pissed off Mama Grizzly here, and you're basically making it this cute and cuddly teddy bear. Yeah, no, that that's basically where you just killed it. That, that, that's the end of Snorlax. It's sad, but I guess Snorlax isn't going to be Snorlax anymore. All right, so I'm sure you've heard about the manga Rent-A-Girlfriend. I talked about the anime when it came out. I actually thought it was kind of an interesting premise. I still do, by the way. So here's an interesting article, though. Uh, the Rent-A-Girlfriend manga hit a big milestone uh, in this year's 38th issue of Kodasa... <laughs> Kodasha's... A weekly shonen magazine. I know I mispronounced that. I do apologize. Uh, the issue hit shelves in Japan this week, bringing with it the 200th chapter of the romantic comedy series, and a character popularity poll has been launched to mark the occasion. But this isn't just any character poll, though. No, no, no. The Rent a Girlfriend manga character who gets the most votes from readers will have a life-size figure produced. 
As for whether or not Sid Figure will get a commercial release, that is yet to be determined. I mean, let's think about it. Are they really going to spend a shit ton of money to mass produce a crap ton of these things and put them out for the <clears throat> questionable people that are going to be buying them? I don't think so. It might be like a limited edition giveaway or something, probably, or a, you have to enter a contest, maybe. But 34 characters are listed on the poll, and fans can use uh, the form once per email address to cast their votes. Uh, the poll will be open until September 4th, and the results will be announced in the pages of Weekly Shonen Magazine. In addition to the 200th chapter milestone, the Rent-A-Girlfriend manga just saw its 22nd collected volume launch in Japan on August 17th. The series first launched in Weekly Shonen Magazine back in July of 2017. So which character would you choose? So let me, I'm kind of curious. Let me see if I can check out this form here. It's probably in Japanese. Yeah, of course it's in Japanese. So I probably wouldn't even be able to... Oh, thank God I can translate it into English. Yay, I can translate it into English! Yay! Thank you, Google Translate. Uh, so the 200th episode uh, commemoration of the original character popularity poll form. So please tell us your uh, favorite from the attractive characters that appear in the series. And the first place character will be life-size figure. Uh, she will borrow 200 episodes. Okay. Deadline is Saturday, September 4th. Uh, personal information, handling, blah, blah, the privacy thing. One vote per email, and then you select the character. So I'm kind of curious what we got on here. Okay, we got... Okay, you actually do have... Oh, my God, I do have... Oh, okay. There's 34 characters, and then there's 35 for other. Okay. So, you have all the main characters. And then you have other. And you get one uh, vote per email. That's interesting. Uh, I'd actually have to think about that. Um, Holy hell. What's the one character's name? Um... Hold on a second, I might actually hold on a second, I might actually vote on this quick. Hold on. Hold on, I might actually vote on this. Or a moment part favor! I might actually I might actually vote on this. Hold on. Um and there we go. I need a character list here, damn it. <laughs> I need to know which characters what here so I know so I know what I'm voting for. Okay, there we go. Uh, let's see here. Is she on here? That's what I gotta see now. Is she on here? There you go. Is that her? No, that's not her. That's the wrong one. Come on, where are you? Huh. Ah, uh, that's weird. Uh, I'm guessing it's that one. Because then the one I'm thinking is the one character would be Chizuru. There's only one on here, and that's the second one, so I'm guessing that's her. Oh, hmm. Hmm. Oh, my God, that one Jessica. I think it's staff. Yeah, okay, so that eh, makes sense there, I guess. Yeah, it makes sense. And uh yeah, I guess it makes sense, but yeah, alright. I mean I can vote on it, but yeah, you can too, I guess. Just check out the uh there's a link in the article. Uh yeah. I mean I don't see why I wouldn't be able to. I don't see why I wouldn't be able to. I don't see why I wouldn't be able to. And... Okay, I voted! Yay! <laughs> I didn't even get a pin for that. <laughs> Alright, yeah, so I cast a vote. Uh, but yeah, so there you go. Hopefully, I mean, I voted for the one that said Cheeseru. That's the only one that said Cheeseru. So I'm assuming I got the right one. I'm hoping I got the right one. But either way, uh, interesting though. Life size figure. So, I mean, that could turn out really well. It could turn out really bad. I don't know. We won't know until it uh, comes out with the official results. But hey, I'll vote on a poll. 
I like voting on polls to see which one's better than not. So, yeah, if you want to check it out, like I said, there's a link in the description. There is a link in the article. Uh, check it out. It's actually really easy. Seriously, just email address, which character you want, boom. If you're like me, just pull up a list of the characters and you know which one you're voting for. Uh, but yeah, that's really easy. But that's interesting. It's really cool, but interesting. Ah, Valve. Dear old Valve. Ah, well, at least they finally managed to do something right, I guess. Anyway, they have patched the exploit that has been letting you add infinite Steam wallet money. Yep, the potentially costly trick involved changing your email and was found by a user on Hacker One. Thank you, Hacker One, for finding this and bringing it to everyone's attention and bringing an end to Scrooge McDucking the world. So, a security researcher on Hacker One <clears throat> recently submitted an exploit that could be used on Steam to gain unlimited funds. You could go Wario up their ass now, but all oh, you could have. <laughs> the exploit has since been patched by Valve, and the company awarded the user who discovered this exploit $7,500. What the fuck? What the hell? I mean, I I've heard about that. Like, you get rewards if you find, like, an issue or something. Like, hey, you know, like, I found a security breach in your thing. This is how, you know, like, I I've noticed it. I've checked it myself, and it does happen. I don't know if it's isolated or not. And then sometimes they do reward you. It's like a percentage of whatever it could possibly save them. So that's interesting, but yeah, enjoy that. Uh, but HackerOne is a site that connects companies like Valve with users who like to hack and tinker with websites, apps, and other pieces of software. These folks can submit exploits and hacks to companies privately, and then in exchange, these tech companies can award back award hackers money for their funds. So this is basically legal hacking. Now, there are some people that they do find things, they are kind of like intelligent, not exactly like a company or something that I have heard of, like you know, getting a, you know, monetary reward from people because, hey, you know, you did save us some money. It's like 10% of what you saved. It's called a finder's fee. Like, hey, you know, you found a bug in our system that, you know, could have potentially crippled the entire thing. Sometimes they'll be, sometimes, not always, sometimes they'll be nice and they'll give you a finder's fee of like, here's 10% of what it is, you know, of what you saved us. So, you know, here you go. Not always, sometimes. Most of the time, they'll just sit, give you, like, a nice letter and say thank you and then walk the hell away and nothing else happens. So, yeah, there you go. But uh, that's kind of nice, though. Uh, but, yeah, Hacker One's a site. So that's so if you're interested in doing that, I'd say see if Hacker One has some openings. Uh, but, yeah. Uh, where was I? Oh, yeah. It's a system that has uh, a track record of helping, such, helping squash such nasty exploits before they can go public. So on August 9th, HackerOne user uh, Debrix privately alerted Valve to a Steam wallet exploit that involved changing your email address and intercepting uh, transactions that use any smart-to-pay payment method. You can read about the full method of attack and how it works via the HackerOne report, uh, which became public on August 10th and was spotted by the Daily Swig and NME a few days later. I think impact is pretty obvious. Attacker uh, can generate money and break the Steam market, sell game keys for cheap, etc. Uh, posted the bricks in their Hacker One report. Well, that does make sense. And keep in mind, this is not something like any single person can do. But if you like, if you like know some of the stuff that they do, or you've read a lot of their reports, this might be something that you might want to try. I could check them out. I don't know, but this isn't something that everybody can do. I can safely say that. As you might expect, though, Valve quickly responded to DeBrick's post. A Valve employee on the site named John P. thanked DeBrick's for their find and explained that Valve have quickly, or had quickly validated what they reported and was taking steps to fix the issue. A follow-up message from John P. explained that the report was clearly written and helpful in identifying any real business risk. Valve then paid DeBrick's $7,500, which is nice. That's more than nice. That's sweet. Uh, but doesn't like, but doesn't seem like enough if this exploit had gone public or had been shared uh, with a few small groups of people. It could have cost Valve more than $7,500. Uh, come on, Valve. But yeah, last year, uh, Riot was offering people $100,000 for finding Valorant exploits. And this is, like I said, there, there are companies. I know Google has a thing. I think they still have it yet. Where if you can uh, 
find a way to, you know, screw up a Chromebook on load and prove like a virus or something can attack Chrome can attack a Chromebook that they would pay you. And a lot of companies they'll put this out like they'll have like the companies that do this stuff and they'll put it out to like regular people and like message boards and in secret places like hey if you can find a security thing in our thing we'll pay you because they want to make sure that they're covering all their bases because a lot of those companies that they're hiring for this stuff don't always do it like they might go through the basic steps but let's say like hacker a and b are doing the basic step but hacker d has a totally new method that's basically going right around what a and b are trying to make sure isn't hackable and d's just gotten right in through a backdoor window yeah it's stuff like that that a lot of companies will go public and say hey if you can find an exploit in our thing and you bring it to our attention we'll pay you because that way they know that one their games are safer for everybody two that they're getting more than just the people that are getting paid you know the ass kissing money to report to them and three they know for a fact that no matter what the game is at least getting some type of recognition which is useful and good at the same time so yeah there are uh that, th that does happen so after everything was squared away and fixed, Valve and DeBricks made the full report public. At this time, we don't know if anyone was able to use this exploit before Valve was notified and patched it. So we don't know if anybody went Scrooge McDuck. But uh, yeah, but I love how this uh, one person leaves a thing here. So you know how I like seeing some comments. In the discussion section, one goes, I mean, $7,500 ain't nothing. No, that that's not. For me, that's goodbye student loan payments, and I still have some money left over. Uh, why throw shade? Uh, pretty sure they have specific tiers for payouts and bug finding. This could have been one of those tiers. Like, hey, look, this is like threat level orange. Okay, threat level orange, we pay between this and this, depending on, you know, the extreme verity of it. And this could have been the high end of it. Now, you don't know. Uh, one could argue, uh, oh, yeah, one could argue an entirely arbitrary... Yeah, it's possible. Uh, but this wallet hack could possibly ping on a company's radar pretty quick. Plus, that's 100,000 bounty from the article uh, you've linked seems to indicate it's up to that amount. And it's only and only for kernel level exploits. Yeah, because if you can figure out a way to screw the kernel of something, right there you go. You get corrupted kernels, that's an entire system has to be wiped. Because I had that issue with my old laptop when I went to... Because there was a... If you ever saw one 8-Bit Guy episode, he goes, and no matter how smart you are in this world, no matter how good you are in this world, there's always somebody out there that's smarter and better than you. Uh, thing like the movie War Games, you had the guy, the main character David, he had to go to somebody that was smarter than him to try to figure out how to get into the game, to get into the back door of the system. And he did so that's what um the epic guy had to do to get his thing fixed that he was going to he went to the jedi master like look you might be obi-wan kenobi you might be good with like this and this but yoda is always the master so you need to go to yoda and for a lot of these companies yeah look here we'll you know put this out but uh for me i actually had to go to my one buddy or my one friend i should say well actually the husband of a friend to helped me with my laptop the one time because I was having an issue and he goes oh yeah you have a corrupted kernel on here and then he goes I just had to reinstall the you know just and he helped me fix up the thing and it fixed my problem and I was like oh that was really easy he goes oh yeah he goes that's exactly what the problem was was just, you had a corrupted kernel so yeah you screw up a kernel on a computer system pff, that's an entire having to either reinstall the whole thing um basically reset the whole thing or yeah it, it can fuck up a lot uh that's an understatement it can mess up a lot of stuff so yeah and kernel level exploits are massively bad so this is actually pretty cool but yeah as far as like offering large sums of money there are companies that do do that they do make stuff public like hey if you find an issue with our thing you let us know plus a lot of times they might be on like certain forums like tech forums reddit forums and stuff like that and because that's like level one darknet sort of shit is reddit forums and 
somebody from like the nerd community will see that and then they'll put that out to the general public to try to get more people to try to help out with this. Like, look, this is something that's big. Let's get, you know, mom, pa, kettle here to give us a hand trying to figure this out here. Because if this can be something that even, like, the main basic line person that doesn't know jack shit about electronics can figure out and they can hack into this, then that's a serious problem. Then this is an exploit that can affect them tremendously horribly. It, it, this isn't a simple, oh, it's just, no. If it can be at this point where, let's say, I mean, I'll use my mom as an, as an example. I do apologize, mom. I'm sorry. I know you're listening. But my mom knows her way around a computer. She damn well better because I've been teaching her. I mean, she can't repair them, but she at least knows how to open a program. She knows how to do some basic troubleshooting, so that's fine. But let's take it back to, like, uh, four years ago, like four or five years ago. She barely knew how to operate a computer. She could turn it on. She could browse the web. I was teaching her that. But let's say that she found an exploit or something that she was suddenly getting, like, glitches left and right. She w If she could figure that out and take advantage of it, that is a problem. Because then all of a sudden it's like, oh, this is a glitch. This is a massive glitch. And like her being like what you would call the basic level of understanding if she's able to take advantage of this that's something that should be shooting up crimson uh, crimson flags here of hey we got a problem uh, and again nope you know no disrespect mom sorry i uh <laughs> sorry about that but she has improved though i have been teaching her she at least knows how to use a computer she goes on facebook she knows how to troubleshoot basic problems so i have been I, I have been teaching you. I do know that. But, yeah, so it's basically something along that line. But there are companies that will do that because, again, if, like, Mom, Pa, Kettle can basically, you know, figure out this glitch and take advantage of it, then for somebody that's already, like, genius-level hacking their ass, it's child's play at that point. If Mom, Pa, Kettle can do it, they pretty much open the back door and bust it down the front door at this point. So, yeah. It's it's one of those type of areas. But still, this is cool, though. At least they patched it. That's a good thing. So, can't go Scrooge McDuck no more. <laughs> hey, I have a present for everybody. I know it was my birthday was Wednesday, but I have a present for everybody. It's bonus, bonus, topic, topic of, of the week. Week, week, week. And this one is definitely an impressive one because for those of you that have been following the Jeopardy's fiasco, this just got personal. So for those of you that know, uh, Alex Trebek sadly passed away, uh, what was it, back in November, I believe? Yes, back in November, Alex Trebek passed away after his long battle with pancreatic, with, uh, pancreatic cancer. And Sony started having this massive round-robin sort of style thing to get of contenders for a new host position and the internet went but shit crazy when of course the uh <clears throat> what was it the executive producer of the long-running quiz show was named the goddamn host and people started losing their minds myself included because first off i felt a little cheated here i would have thought hey look you had contestants that actually tried you had actual celebrities I hadn't even heard of this guy. Well, apparently he did do a week. He was part of the contenders. But I never heard of the guy beforehand. So, apparently Jeopardy has now dropped his ass. After <laughs> a little over a week since he's been coordinated in as the new host. He's no longer the host of Jeopardy. Uh, cue the Price is Right. You just lost music because you used to be the executive producer on that show too. But come on, cue the Price is Right music. <laughs> yeah, you got screwed there. So uh, the list of short-term uh, presenters included uh, Richards himself, apparently. Mike Richards was the guy that had won, but no longer is is now been removed as the host. Uh, you had Aaron Rodgers, the quarterback of the Green Bay Packers, uh, Jeopardy champion and consultant Ken Jennings, and accomplished actor LeVar Burton. Now, Burton's uh, appearance, though, was after the massive social media push. I think there was a couple of signed petitions to have him uh, on as one of the guest hosts. I know we had... Uh, I, 
I, I'm going to... Uh, the one that played Amy on The Big Bang Theory, because I cannot think of... I cannot pronounce her goddamn name. She was also on that god-awful show, Blossom. And I apologize. I hated that show. I did watch a couple episodes. I hated it. Oh, my God. That thing was... Oh, my God. That was terrible. Blah. But anyway... Uh, Richards was forced to <clears throat> step down. Yeah, I think they had... I, I don't think Sony had a choice in this one, to be honest with you. Uh, the executive producer of the long-running quiz show Jeopardy is uh, leaving his seemingly self-appointed role as the program's news host, following a damning report by The Ringer about his shitty behavior, uh, both on his personal podcast and his previous role as executive producer of The Price is Right. Quote, It pains me that these past incidents and comments cast cast such a shadow on Jeopardy. No, they haven't cast a shadow on Jeopardy. They cast a shadow on you. Jeopardy is still squeaky clean. You! You are the one that is not squeaky clean. This is pretty much uh, Death to Smoochie where hey look, the network that hosted Rainbow Randolph wasn't coming under massive fire from the media. It was Rainbow Randolph that came under massive fire from the media. It, you know, They were like, look, Rainbow Randolph screwed people. There are some executives, yeah, we're yeah, we're investigating this. They came under some scrutiny, but not massive shadowing. It's like, no, no, they're more pissed at the host and whoever was backing the host. Not so much the people behind the host. Like, not the studio, not the studio, not the production house, but those people. Because I remember the line from the old guy that goes uh, to John Stewart's character, you know, you need to find somebody that's, you know... Good, relevant, and the old guy stands up, puts his hands on the table, goes, and squeaky fucking clean! Because they were not going to go through another Rainbow Randolph scandal. But yeah, so they this doesn't cast a shadow on Jeopardy. This casts a shadow on you. You're the one that started trying to shove Jeopardy into the eclipse there. Um, so yeah, he goes, uh, he's really upset that these past incidents have cast a shadow on Jeopardy as we look to start a new chapter. Richards wrote on the show's production team in a statement. Uh, wrote to the show's production team in a statement shared with the Ringer reporter uh, by Sony Pictures Television. As such, I will be stepping down as host effective immediately. Look, you shouldn't even have gotten this thing. You being the executive producer should have automatically eliminated you from the possibility of being a contestant or even being a contender for the role. I I'm sorry, it's true. It's honestly true. That is, why do you think radio stations always have that disclaimer with a contest that family members of radio station employees are ineligible from participating? You were the executive producer of the show. You should not have even been in the running for consideration. I, I'm sorry, you shouldn't have been. I don't care if you guest hosted, you should not have even been in the running. I don't care what your resume has. You should not have been in the running for it. You're the executive producer, for God's sake. You can basically just give yourself the job. And which is basically what I, I swear a lot of people, agree, I agree with them. That's probably much what he did. So Richard's new gig was first announced by Sony Pictures Television on August 11th, which would have made him the third person to act as Jeopardy's full-time host since the show premiered in 1964. Uh, like I said, his predecessor, the beloved personality Alex Trebek, passed away on November 8th of last year after a long battle with pancreatic cancer, prompting Sony to field a series of interim hosts while contemplating the show's future. Sony's eventual decision to make Richards the new Jeopardy host was met with overwhelming criticism early on, mostly due to optics. Uh, as executive producer, Richards clearly had a hand in choosing the show's next presenter, despite reports that he stepped away from the process. My ass, you did. Uh, when he became a candidate, uh, that announcement made the weeks of interim hosting feel less like a trial process, but more like stepping stones until his eventual takeover of the show. It's like, look, they're just keeping my seat warm, but I'm going to be sitting on that throne. Well, you ain't sitting on the throne no more, are you? They threw your ass out of the palace. The criticism only worsened, though, after The Ringer published a lengthy story earlier this week detailing Richard's history of discriminatory language, and many of these incidents involved sexist, racist, and anti-Semitic remarks on his personal podcast, The Random Show. I'm not even joking. That is literally what it's called. Uh, 
but he was also named in at least two discrimination lawsuits during his term as executive producer of The Price is Right that allegedly mistreated the game show's female employees. Oh, he tried to pull a Bob Barker. Oh, goody. Uh, in one, the former Price is Right model, Brandy Cochran, and I do apologize if I have mispronounced her name, uh, claimed she had been given fewer opportunities on the show after Richards found out about her pregnancy. Indeed, her contract with the program was terminated after she gave birth. Uh, Cochran also alleged Richard decide, Richards decided that the game show's female models should wear short skirts and bikinis more frequently. Yeah, like that's not creepy at all. It's just, you know, I know a bunch of people that are home during the day are mostly, you know, single parents, uh, stay-at-home parents or retirees. Yeah, sure, let's just give them something to look at, right? No! Come on, it's wrong! Even I, even I feel, even I feel creepy at reading that. God! Uh, when these claims were brought to light, though, by the Daily Beast earlier this month, Richard told Richards told Jeopardy staff that the statements made about him in the lawsuit didn't reflect reality. Oh, so this is like an alternate reality where it was me, but it wasn't me. That was me from Dimension C199. Yeah, 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 they're sleazy as hell there. No, no, that wasn't me. But it, 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 it I mean, it was me, but it wasn't me, me. <laughs> it didn't reflect reality. That's... A weak ass statement, by the way. Uh, despite becoming too radioactive for the front facing hosting job, Richards will apparently stay on at Jeopardy as an executive producer. Oh, I would disconnect him in all ways, shapes, and forms. The guy is radioactive. He is like a mafia wife. Do not touch. <laughs> I'm sorry, he is. He's like a mafia don's wife. Do not touch. Oh my god, no. Ah. Uh. Sony Pictures Television has resumed its search for a permanent host, uh, syndication host to join the Big Bang Theory actor and neuroscientist uh, Miami Balik. Uh, except I can't pronounce. I do apologize. I have mispronounced her name. I know it. I can't ever pronounce it. She's the one that played Amy Farrah Fowler on the Big Bang Theory, who was previously chosen alongside Richards to lead primetime Jeopardy specials and spinoffs. So she basically got the short end of the stick on this. She she did. She got the short end of the stick on this. Because he got to be the, you know, the prime time. Look, I'm getting, you know, all the attention. She just got the specials and the spinoffs. So, like, if they would host, like, Celebrity Jeopardy, where they'd have the celebrities come on and play for charity or something, she could host that. Or any Jeopardy spinoffs, she would host that. How the hell is that fair? No, no, no. She got hosed. But I agree, though. Let's, you know, restart this again. Look, look it's a scratch. We got to try this again. We, you know... The reports came in, unfortunately. We can't go with our front runner. Our you know, first place winner has been disqualified. We need to go with other choices. We're going to try this again. Let's go again. Let's see what we got going on here. But um, I agree with this article. Please, anyone but Dr. Oz. No. No. Please, God, no. Any, please, anyone but him. I will take a barking chihuahua over him. Take, I'll take Caesar Milan over him. Anyone but him. Okay? There. So you start your search, but anyone but Dr. Oz. Okay? No Dr. Oz. I'll take a barking chihuahua over him. No, no, no. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'll make it better. I'll take a barking chihuahua that just got neutered over him. Yeah. There, there you go. There you go. Yeah. There. <laughs> I'll tell you. But, um, yeah. No way. Not him. But, yeah. I would not even be keeping this guy on as executive producer, to be honest with you. He's radioactive. Do not touch. He's like a Mafia Don's wife. You do not touch. And you're going to keep him on as executive producer. Oh, yeah. Like, that's not going to hurt you in the long run. You read the article. It doesn't reflect reality. What reality are you smoking in that this doesn't reflect? I, I mean, I'm just curious. What reality does this not reflect? Because something about this to me smells like crap. And either you're smoking something really strong that you don't see this, or somewhere along the line... Um, we all basically realize, oh, yeah, um, no, we're fine with it. No, something's up here. I don't buy this BS for beans. So, 
Yeah! No! Hell no! I would not even be keeping you on as executive producer. After this came to life, I would have chucked your ass right out the door. Or if I were Sony, I would be looking for another executive producer while telling him, Hey, look, we'll keep you on as executive producer. Meanwhile, in the boardroom, All right, we gotta find somebody else to replace his sorry ass as executive producer. Let's start a search for that, but you keep it low-key. I don't want him to know. <laughs> I would not be keeping him on. I I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I would not be keeping him on because you're not going to have anybody that's going to be comfortable wanting to come on there and be a guest with this accusation and this coming out as light that, hey, look, he's still on the show yet. Are, are they really going to be wanting to come on the show with this information that's out there? The dye has been cast. The water has been polluted. It, it doesn't matter, you know, if it's, as he put, does, didn't reflect reality. It, it didn't reflect reality. Okay, so this reflected the alternate reality where you just screwed over. The bullshit, bullshit, bullshit! No, it reflects reality. You just don't want to admit that it reflects reality. But no, it reflects reality. It's, it's, it reflects reality. You just don't want to admit it, but it does. But yeah, no. I, I mean, I don't, I don't believe it for beans. But yeah, I will admit, though, that... Um, I, I can't pronounce her name. I swear, I can't. The one that played Amy, I, I cannot pronounce her name. I do apologize to her. I, I cannot pronounce her name. I really, I cannot pronounce your name. I really can't. I do apologize. I can't pronounce your name. I, I, I feel like every time I try, I'm messing it up. I do apologize. But she got screwed. She got royally screwed. Oh, yeah, she's going to be uh, the other host that we have picked. But she's only going to be doing the specials and the spinoffs. So you give her the gig, but you're not giving her the gig. Yeah, she got screwed. She got screwed. But yeah, no, I, I don't buy the bullshit. I, I would not be keeping him on as executive producer at all, to be honest with you. I would be chucking his ass to the wall wholeheartedly I would be chucking his ass to the wall putting him right out on the street and going nope you are gone get out we don't we, we don't want you because first off you came on this show as the freaking host then you're like you're the executive producer then all of a sudden Trebek dies we start going through the cast of people that might possibly replace him then all of a sudden it's like oh well I'm the executive producer I am in the running to replace Alex Trebek oh so you're just going to give yourself the job. And I remember having a long argument with somebody on Twitter about this. Ironically, the person I kind of had to block on Twitter. But it's like, you know, here's the thing. It doesn't matter what we the fans say. It doesn't matter what we the fans want. It matters what Sony wants. And in this case, I think he pretty much just like, oh, well, no, they, you know, they have issues. Oh, the ratings weren't that great with this one. Uh, I am really the best candidate for this job. And then that way, it's like, yeah, I control all of Jeopardy now. Yeah, well, now you are as the executive producer, and if I were you, I would not be counting my eggs. I would not be counting my chickens before they hatch, because I'm getting the feeling that you're going to be losing that job soon. Because with this allegation and this uh, light that was cast upon you, I'm getting the feeling that Sony's going to be looking for a new executive producer of Jeopardy, and it ain't going to be you. For now you have your job. I would not be counting my praises just yet. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, there is that. Alrighty, everybody, and that's going to do it then this week for the Absolutely Completely Random Podcast. I'd like to thank everybody for hanging out with me for the last, oh, I'm guessing a little over an hour or so. Thank you all for hanging out with me. Thank you all for killing out here on the Web Designer 18 channel. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Don't forget to submit your questions for the Q&A. Uh, please have them in by Tuesday, 12 a.m. Eastern Time. I was debating whether or not I wanted to do one this month, but I guess I'm doing one this month. Because I do have a few questions, so don't forget to submit your questions for the Q&A this month. And uh, I'd like to thank everybody for giving me topics for the uh, Quote the Devil um, podcast anniversary thing. Uh, thank you all so much for giving me topics. If you can't tell by the tone of my voice, I got zero topics from people. So uh, 
Don't worry, I'm still going to come out with the video. I'm just going to have to pick them myself, I guess. So it's plan B, which is what I was afraid was going to happen, but it's plan B anyway. So off to plan B I go! But until next time, I'm Andrew Rose, and this has been the Absolutely Completely Random Podcast. Stay safe, stay healthy, everybody, and I'll catch you all next week. Bye!